Okay gang, so in this video, I wanna do three IPSO examples. So two that are more like predict the product with a supporting mechanism, and then one like ranking problem. So hopefully it's not too long, but I just wanted to make sure we knew what an IPSO substitution was before we had this giant video where explain what it was, and then we did these examples, and you're sleeping by the end of it. Okay, so let's just rip these three examples. Okay, so in this problem, we're given a substrate, we're given something over the arrow, and we're supposed to come up with at a product, okay? So, I hope what you're seeing, two things right off the bat. So when we're doing ipso a substitution examples, in my brain I'm looking for a good leaving group, right? We're always, always looking for a good leaving group, let's be honest. A good leaving group, I'm looking for my ortho para condition, ortho para EWG group. We need at least, we need greater than or equal to one, right? And uh, we obviously need a nucleophile. Those are our three things, right? These are kind of hopefully a given, uh, but this is the one we're really looking for. Okay, so in this example, I hope you're seeing, all right, chlorine is certainly our good leaving group, so that's a check. And then we got a one-two relationship here, so that's ortho, so we're already good, but it even factors in that we have this one-four relationship. So clearly, you know, I'll make the problem a little more interesting. This could also be, actually now we'll leave this here, but I hope you could know this could also be these could be two SO3H groups. That would not change the fact that this uh, mechanism could proceed. But, and you know what? Why not? We'll keep it that way. So, what uh, we got a nucleophile. A nucleophile is methoxide. So, what's our first move? We're going to attack the carbon that is attached to our good leaving group. And remember, multi step mechanism, we're not booting our leaving group off the bat. We're actually going to boot the electron pair next door. That is uh, the double, the pi bond that it is a part of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try and draw this resonance as small as I can, because by making these sulfonyl groups, I kind of opened up a can of worms. They're kind of big. SO3H. So I have a chlorine. I have an OH, and I have a negative charge. Let me draw my. So if someone ever, like, you know, if maybe the problem was predict the product, but also explain why the Ipso substitution proceeds, uh, here's why, right? We create this charge, and we know that this charge is stabilized, so I can swing these electrons down, and I can kick this up, this up as a lone pair. I'll switch to black so it's a little easier to see. So lone pair right here. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my sulfonyl group. SO3H down here. CLOH. I'm just going to draw the resonance on this group, and I hope you'll know that you could also draw it here. So what I could do is I could even swing these electrons. I keep making this charge too close to where it needs to be. I could swing these down right here, and then I'll need to bump an electron pair up here. Still have my sulfonyl group here. Still have the OH and CL there just hanging out, watching this resonance show unfold. But we got a, a negative oxygen right here, double bond right there, an OH. We got a double bond here. And yep, there we go. We just have one negative charge, right? I'm going to make these arrows a little bit smaller. But I hope you know that this, I could also have moved these electron pair, this electron pair over here, and done this. So I would have done this, this, sulfonyl group, OH, CL, double bond here, sulfonyl group here. So you can see the thing, the groups get a little big, but I hope you can see we'd have one more, one more right there, okay? So the point being, there's a crap load of resonance, right? That charge is stable, it's not going anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carry this structure forward down over here. So right after the attack, which we know is good because the charge it creates is stable, by re stabilized by resonance rather, chlorine, oxygen, sulfonyl. Okay, what's going to happen? is these electrons swing down, chlorine gets booted, 
And by predicting the product, what we can have is just the replacement of chlorine and uh, OCH3, right? Our methoxide, so we have OCH3 and this right here. That is our product, ladies and germs. One dipso substitution down. One more to go, one ranking, and then we are calling it quits. Okay, gang, example number two. Let's get it. All right, so let's say you run into a problem like this on a test where you're given this problem and you're asked to propose a mechanism. Uh, you know, which, which I always find funny, it's like, oh, I could, I could propose just not do this problem, but it's just funny. It's like, I'll propose this, but it's like I propose just not do it at all. Anyways, let's say we have to propose a mechanism, right? So in this problem, it looks crazy. It almost looks like, so it looks like the bond to our uh, sulf, hyposulfide, that, this SO2 group, right? We have an SO2 that's bonded to this ring, and you know, then we have this action with this nitro group, but what, weirdly enough, it's almost like we're moving the bond between here and here to here and here, right? So when in fact, actually, it's more like we're, yeah, we're flipping the rings kind of essentially. It looks crazy. It looks weird. It looks hard. That's what I thought when I first looked at it. But clearly this has to do with an ipso substitution, right? That's what we're doing. So let's just take it one step at a time. Let's see if we can pick out anything that, you know, seems interesting, kind of jumps out to us and see where it takes us. Okay. So if we look at this structure right here, I hope you're seeing we have something negative up here. Potentially a nucleophile, right? It is straight up negative likes positive charge, right? So then I hope what you're seeing also is if this were our nucleophile, right? Let's just consider that for a second. What could we attack, right? And if you look at this, if we were to expand what's going on with this sulfur into oxygens, it's really this, okay? Because sulfur comes from the sixth column on the periodic table with oxygen, but sulfur is in that layer, like uh, level three, so it has, can expand its octet, right? So what I'm seeing here is the potential for some resonance, maybe, if, it, if we were to dump electrons on that sulfur, okay? Or an oxygen, whatever, whatever, ha uh, whatever have you. Okay, so let's just say, okay, this, this is what we're, and why I bring that up is that if we attack this carbon with this good nucleophile, this nucleophile, this could might be like a good leaving group for us, is what I'm driving at, and I can't pronounce anything. So, saying that we kind of have the nucleophile and the leaving group, but what about that oh so coveted electron withdrawing group condition? Ortho pair, right? Well, 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 well. If this is the carbon we're going to attack, if this is our substrate carbon, well, we absolutely have an ortho one two relationship there. So, let's just go ahead and attack right here and that can kick electrons up right here. Methyl group, I'm gonna bring this back to an SO2 for now. Okay, so that lone pair right here, I'm gonna draw out the nitro group. Okay, so remember the reason why this is so good is because we balance this lone pair there and I can draw resonance. And I'm so sorry that I'm going to make you draw, or I'm gonna make you watch me draw this resonance, but I am. Probably thinking, damn, Joe. As frustrating as it has been you guys for, to have you watch me draw this, trust me, I don't feel, uh, it feels very annoying to have to do this every damn time. Nitrogen, so oxygen with a negative, oxygen with a negative, nitrogen with a positive, okay. So I hope what you're seeing, oh my God, I forgot. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So we got, oh man, I'm so sorry. I did not draw this well at all, but we have this going on. I really should have drawn this differently, but we kind of have a weird one, two, three, four, five type of ring going on. I was like, where's that carbon bond? Okay, so we have this going on, right? And this attack works because of the fact that this can be a good leaving group. We'll see how it is a good leaving group after the fact. But this is negative. This can be attacked because of this electron withdrawing group that can take on resonance uh, next door in ortho. And we can see that through the resonance right here. So what we can do 
is if I'm just going ahead and just make that arrow disappear, is what I could do is I could have these electrons swing back down. I can kick off the SO2 group. And in fact, what we have is this. It's just that we kind of flipped it to where we keep this ring the same, but it makes more sense now that this bond is gone to kind of pancake this up like this so that I can draw the oxygen up like this. I hope you can see that, okay? And you're thinking, oh, why is this, is this absolutely a good leaving group? Well, the answer is yes, because we can have this drawn like this. Sulfur would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or, you know, you could, yeah, that works. So it's abbreviated SO2 minus. So the point being is that while it looked scary right off the bat, really this was just an ipso substitution in disguise. Okay, gang, what, uh, we just have one more example. Sorry, I, I was like, why is this book down here? I was using it to draw all this nonsense. One more example. We did kind of the heavy mechan uh, mechanistic lifting. So this is gonna be just a simple little ranking problem, call it quits, drive off into the video sunset. So stick around. Okay, gang, let's bring this video home. All right, so what I want this problem to be is I'm gonna give you three structures right here and I want to do the classic ABC ranking. So we will assign the structure that is most likely to undergo uh, a nuclei, uh, an NAS attack, a, an IPSO substitution, right? A nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. That structure gets an A, and then the worst structure gets a C, okay? So let's take a pass through and then we can assign our ABCs. So if we look at this structure right here, so we get, or before we do that, we have the same leaving group, right? And then we have the same electron withdrawing groups that are supposed to you know, make our ipso substitutions possible by providing resonance stabilization. So if we take a gander right here, you know, we have a para relationship clearly. I'll do a para and then we have like one EWG. Okay, standard, I see you. All right, so if we look here, let's not get turned around by the fact stuff is you know, not just like nice and vertical on the ring, but we have an ortho relationship here. We have a para relationship here, okay. So we got ortho para, we have two EWGs. Looking pretty good, pretty, pretty good. Finally, so looks like this was kind of like a poor gotcha, but we have meta and two electron withdrawing groups. Okay, so I think it's safe to say, I think we'd all agree on that remember, orth things being ortho para help the ipso substitution gets stabilized, definitely make the reaction go faster, more favorable. This is our A, okay? And I hope you can not, like see that, remember we drew the resonance, the meta, e, the meta positioned electron withdrawing groups don't help us out at all. So in fact, this, because we have one here and zero here, we have zero ortho para, we have zero EWGs, we're gonna have our B over here. This is second best because this one has two and this has C. Okay, gang. So this is just a nice little, you know, further extension of our introduction to ipso substitutions. So we're gonna kind of see how the ipso substitution plays into creating, like how we can make phenols with the ipso substitution and a whole bunch of other chemistry. This is just truly the beginning. So, and I think you'll find it to be pretty cool chemistry. So I'll see you all in the next video.